Hey everyone! I made a tutorial for how to repurpose a fabric face mask into a holder for doggy poop bags. I know we all have a large collection of face masks by this time and we're getting vaccinated, so this is a great way to repurpose and continue to use your face mask. What you'll need are pins, a grommet post, a 4 inch zipper, grommet eyelets, a grommet base, thread snippers or scissors, an old mask, snaps and a setter, and a scrap of fabric. First, take an old mask. This design uses a contour mask like this, not the pleated style. And I know that we're all supposed to still be wearing masks to keep each other safe. Um, this is in case you have maybe an old mask and it's all stretched out, or you just bought too many masks and you have a ridiculous collection, or maybe someday in the future we won't need them. So get your thread snippers or scissors. I like to use thread snippers because you get such a close cut. And we're going to get rid of the elastic, or if you have fabric straps, just cut those off as well. If you want to get a really close snip, because you're picky like me and you want things to be as perfect as possible, it helps to really stretch out the elastic band so you get a really good snip right by the fabric. And then we just do the same thing on the other side. I like to pull the elastic as far as it'll go, and then just snip right at the corner. Okay, so now we have our elastic-free contour mask. Step two, grab your four inch sew-in zipper. Fold your mask in half and place it on a surface so the curved edge is at the top and the folded edge is towards the right. We'll sew the zipper in right along the curved edge of the mask. The zipper pull itself will line up right at the fold of the mask, directly in line with that crease. So just line the top edge of the zipper pull up with a seam in the center of the mask so they're directly in line with one another. Then you'll just continue down the edge of the mask, lining up the ridge of the zipper as close as you can. Then grab your pins and we'll just pin it in place. You'll probably want to pin the zipper pull area early on just to make sure that it doesn't move while you're pinning the rest of the zipper in. Now we'll deal with that extra fabric at the top of the zipper. I just sort of tucked mine in on the other side of the mask at a slight diagonal, just so you can't see it peeking out over the top of the mask. And pin that in place. Then just carry on pinning all the way down the edge of the mask Make sure that as you're pinning, the zipper ridge isn't moving farther away from the mask, so you want them to be touching each other, and you don't want a gap in between. When you get to the end, you'll line the extra fabric up with the top of the mask again, so that none of the fabric is peeking over the edge. And pin that last pin in place. And there you go. Everything's pinned in place and ready to go. And now we'll take it over to the sewing machine and do a straight seam right across the edge of the mask. If you have top stitching on the mask like we do here, you can do a stitch in the ditch, which means you're just gonna stitch right over the exact same spot where those stitches already are. All right, we're back. And we've got a nice straight seam down one side of our zipper. On the back, it should look like this. Now we'll pin in the other side so you want to take one outer edge of the mask and line it up with the other outer edge of the mask. So both wrong sides are facing up or the interior sides you might call them are facing up and you wanna line them up exactly in line. And then we pin it in place just like we did with the other side. I'm putting my pins on the right side of the mask just cause I know I'm gonna sew with that side up and it's easier not to sew over your pins if you can see them. Then I flip the mask right side out and I continue pinning down that edge, lining up the ridge of the zipper as close as I can to the top edge of the mask. I'm really picky about getting it absolutely as close as I possibly can, but it's not like it's going to fall apart if you don't do that, it will still work. Also, I apologize for my gross thumbnail where the nail polish peeled off. Uh, let's just pretend I'm not forcing you to look at that 
for the duration of an extreme close-up tutorial. When you get to the end there and you have that same little um, edge of extra material, we'll just do the same thing we did on the other side. So you want to get that little silver stopper at the end of the zipper as close as you can to the center seam of the mask and pin that in place. And then you have this extra little flap of material. So we'll just do the same thing we did on the other side. Cross over to the other side of the mask and pin it down at a slight diagonal so it's just out of the way. And there you have it. So now we have the other edge of the zipper all pinned up and we can sew again just along the top of the mask there. Be careful not to get the other edge of the mask caught when you're sewing the new edge. Um, so you just have to kind of nudge that under the presser foot correctly. And this is what it should look like when you are all done sewing both sides. And now you have a functional zipper. Hooray! All right, step three. This is the worst part. Grab your grommet post, your grommet base, and the two parts of the eyelet of the grommet itself. You have the top and the bottom. And I found that my two layer mask was actually too thin for the grommet. So I took this tiny little scrap of flannel and I'm gonna add it just for another layer. And then decide where you want your grommet to go, which is actually gonna be where the dog bags will eventually come out. Once you decide where you want that hole to be, grab your thread snippers or your scissors and just snip a tiny little snip. And then you wanna cut a pretty small hole. You want it to be just big enough for the top of the grommet to squeeze through. So you can see here, I take the top of the grommet, it's the rounded, more pretty side, and I push through from the front to the back, and the fabric kind of has to squeeze around the grommet, which is good. You want that to be pretty tight. Then you take the bottom part of the grommet, it's the thinner piece, and you're going to hold it so the rounded side, it's like the other prettier rounded side, is actually face down. So it's the closest side to the mask, and you just pop it right on over the other part of the grommet. If your mask is also pretty thin and you want to add a little piece of fabric to make the grommet just hold a little tighter to the fabric, um, you just kind of do the same thing. You're gonna snip it and then cut a small grommet sized hole. And then remove the back part of the grommet if you still have it there and just squeeze the next layer of fabric over the grommet and then replace the back side again with the rounded side facing toward the mask. Okay, grab your grommet base and your grommet post. I don't know if those are the correct technical terms, but that's what we're going to call them. You want the outside of the grommet, so the part that's gonna show, it's rounded. You want that rounded edge to fit right into the rounded edge of the base. Then grab the post and insert it right into the grommet. Make sure it's centered in there straight and then take a mallet and hit the top of the post a few times pretty hard. It might actually take a few grommets to get enough force and not too much force. Too much can damage the grommet, not enough won't secure it. All right, I did that off screen because it's loud and annoying. When you're back, you should have a grommet that looks something like this. If it's done correctly, there should be no space between either side of the garment and the fabric. So you can see here, it's pretty tight, no space on that side. And then there's also no space between the fabric on the outside and the grommet and the grommet is not misshapen from being hit too hard. Okay, step four, take a piece of fabric, any scrap will do. It can really be any width, any length. It's just going to be a little loop that will keep your doggy bag um, looped around whatever you want it on. So you can snap it onto your dog's harness um, or you know your belt loop. This red piece is binding tape, which is nice because it's really already the right size. 
If you don't have binding tape, you can just take a piece of scrap fabric, fold it into a thin piece like this, maybe three or four inches long. I folded in the edges just to make it look pretty and finished, but you don't have to do that. I kind of folded it like a, a gum wrapper, just so um, none of the unfinished edges are on the outside, but you don't have to do that. And take whatever shape piece you made, sew along one short end, the other short end, and then down the length of it. Then take the loop strap and sew it to just one of the short edges of the mask. Don't sew both of the edges of the mask together at this time. Once you have the strap sewn on, place the grommet side up and decide where you want the strap to snap on to the front of the doggy bag and how big you want the loop itself to be. Step seven. Wait, I actually forget what step we're on. Whatever, it's time for snaps. Snaps are made of four pieces, two for the bottom of the snap and two for the top of the snap. The first part you'll use is the spiky part of the two bottom parts of the snap. In the area you decided you want your snap to go, pierce through the fabric from the inside of the mask to the outside of the mask. If I'm having a hard time getting the piece to pierce all the way through, sometimes I'll take my thread snippers and just push down on the fabric around the spike. And here you can see it's gone through all the layers properly. Then take the receiving end of the snap and place it over the spike. So the spike goes right through the hole of the receiving piece. Then you get to use this weird snap gadget. The smooth bottom side of the snap will fit into the black part of the gadget really nicely. So you'll feel it sort of sit in there in the right position. It'll settle nicely. Then you just squeeze it and it should have squeezed a little spike down to hold it in place. And you have the bottom part of your snap all set to go. Now you just have to decide exactly where you want the top piece of your snap to sit on the loop fabric. Once you've decided that, take the spiky part of the two top pieces of the snap and pierce it through the loop fabric from the top of the fabric to the bottom. So when you're making your loop fabric, you do want to make sure that it's wide enough to accommodate the top of a snap. Then take the last part of the snap the snappy part of the snap. And just like we did on the bottom, place it over the spike so the spike goes through the hole in the center. Then you'll use the snap gadget in the same exact way, placing the smooth side in the black part and giving it a really good squeeze. Again, it should flatten the spike to hold the pieces in place. Now your snap is done. You can fold that loop over and snap it in place. Now you have your attachment loop to attach your doggy bag to whatever you like. Mine came out pretty short, which is fine because I attach it to my dog's harness. But if you wanted a larger loop, of course you could just start with a longer piece of scrap fabric. You could even make it big enough to fit on your wrist. So you could just snap it on and not have to worry about lugging the dog bags around. Two more seams and we're done. We're just gonna sew up the other long edge of the mask Make sure the snap loop is open and sew across the short edge of the mask. All sewn up. So the long edge is sewn, the short edge is sewn, which makes the only openings our zipper end and our grommet. Time for the most satisfying part, adding the poop bags to your new repurposed mask. I recommend not accidentally unrolling all of them. Unzip your zipper. and add your bags. Loosen up the last bag and stick it through the grommet. Zip your bag up and you've got a newly repurposed mask into doggy bag.